All right, all right, what's up, what's good? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. And this is the Cool Factor Podcast. And it is once again a solo podcast by your boy BQ. I prefer to go back and forth with TW, you know what I mean? I He prefers to do podcasts with me, but sometimes we got to fill in for each other. He's still on vacation. I believe we should be back to back to rock next week. We'll be ready to rock. But I got I to gotta fill in for him, you know what I mean? Because when I go on vacation and uh, haven't really decided yet, either July or August, uh, when I head out to California for a bit, <clears throat> excuse me, he's going to have to to fill in for me. He's going to have to do some solo work. So uh, this is a cool factor. If it's your first time here. Whatever platform you're listening on, consider becoming a valued subscriber. Would appreciate very much. So the last podcast I did, the last Cool Factor that I bought my, was by myself, uh, record numbers for the Cool Factor podcast. Uh, shattered numbers. And it wasn't because it was just me by myself. It was just one of those weeks that, you know, the podcast did really well. So I don't take any credit for that. I believe the podcast is a lot better when it's me and TW. But that's just the way it is sometimes, folks. I'm going to jump right into the, the episode. Uh, you know, there's always some talking points for impact floating a, around, but without TW here, I'd rather just kind of jump right into the episode. Uh, but first, the way my weekend went on Friday, uh, went out to Indianapolis, which isn't too terribly far for a squared circle expo. And, uh, you know, I love going to wrestling conventions. I hate spending money with absolute passion. Like, I'm one of the cheapest people you'll meet. I hate to spend money, but when I go to a wrestling convention, I spend whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I pulled out quite a bit of money and went through it very quickly there, uh, taking pictures, doing eight by tens. And what sucked is I had to work during the day, and I ended up staying later than I wanted to. And Indianapolis is not—it's not too bad for me. It's about three hours or so. Um, so by the time I got there, you know, we only had hour, 45 minutes to do everything we want to do. I took three, uh, myself and three of my kids with me, man. So I run out of money and I'm like, shit. So I run, I have to go, the ATM in the hotel is completely drained. So fortunately my bank is next door to the venue. So I go in there, I run, boom, I pull up, pull out more money, come back. And it's right at like 9 PM Eastern and all the wrestlers are done like they're they're just packing up um L larry d was the one i was like yo yo can i can you just give me one second he's like yeah 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 cool uh try to do it with chelsea green she, uh <laughs> so my son really wants to take a picture with you i know you're packing up she's like no no i'm done you know so that's that's her choice you know what i mean um she was actually bsing with diana and Britt. she's always said like the three of them are really close so the three of them were were bsing cardona came over and they they split uh, but Brian Myers was there. Crazy Steve was there. I didn't get a chance to get to Crazy Steve. And the reason was, so usually this expo, the wrestlers are in two different groups or two different rooms. This year they had so many, there was a third room. I didn't know where the room was. And I was thinking because the expo was over two days, it's like, okay, maybe half the people are here, half aren't. And it wasn't until the very end. My daughter walks past and she's like, hey, there's people in this other room. We go in there and, you know, I see my homegirl Allison Kay in there with Marty Bell. Um... But man, there was some I was still trying to get to Rebel, been trying to get to the beautiful people for a while. Not so much for Velvet, but for uh, Angelina Love, who lives close to me, and I've seen her out in public, but I didn't approach her. <laughs> so I've been waiting for an opportunity to uh, to see her. So it, but it was fun, you know. Was, uh, Santana Ortiz were there, um, lots of, lots of AEW cats, lots of Impact cats. Uh, so it was cool. It was good stuff. Um, I think I said Brian Myers. Um, I wore a Brian Myers shirt there, so so that was cool. But that was that was how it went. So if you guys, you know, ever have opportunity to go to a wrestling convention, and and maybe it's something you haven't done before, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. Like it's it's worth the memories for me. Uh, Brooke Hogan was there, so that was <laughs> that one was really cool for me. I had a big crush on her when I was a teenager, so you know it was cool to do that. But uh, really good stuff, real real fun stuff. So let's let's dive into this. Let's dive into the episode. 
So what are one of the things I'm always harping on week in and week out? And it's the way the, the show looks, right? The editing, the, uh, you know, the, the color correction, the saturation, the, you know, uh, the levels, all that shit. I'm always talking about that in one way or another, right? So this episode had a really natural look to it. It wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better. It was 90% better. When I say it wasn't perfect, it's just little, little whatever. You know what I mean? But it, um, it looked good. I don't want to take full credit for that. Uh, but what I, I do know that there are some things I say on my shows that some people don't agree with, but there's a lot of people who do. And those people can be very outspoken. They get on Twitter. They're tagging Scott. They're tagging Gail. They're tagging the guys that edit the show. Um, and changes are clearly being made. Okay. Clearly they are not going to change w- the way they present. We own the night. That's just not, it, that is clear that it's not going to happen, but this episode actually didn't have an intro. And if you guys remember last time I got in here, I, I started dropping numbers. I was like, the bell didn't ring for Gresham versus uh, Kenny King until the eight and a half minute mark into the show. Now, if you guys, I'm real hit or miss with NXT because it like really sucks. But the only and then NWA, I'm I'll go a few weeks without, then I'll you know binge it, whatever. But AEW is the other wrestling show that I watch with this try to watch with the same consistency I do Impact. And a lot of their shows, the guy is coming out for the first match within five seconds after the intro song hits. You know what I mean? Like within 30 seconds, within a minute, within two minutes, like you're getting a wrestler out there. You're getting something to let you know what the episode is about. So I thought that was an improvement this week as well. You know, they they recapped the Josh stuff. It took about a, a minute and a half. I still think that's that's too much at the beginning. I don't think it's necessary. I know in, in theory, recaps are great, but there's other wrestling shows that don't kick off with recaps, you know, and they do just fine. You can factor it in later in the show. But the reason I was dropping numbers last time with, you know, it's taken, uh, at one point, I think it played Wheel on the Night for two and a half minutes straight while they ran down next week's card, the New Japan card, and the the uh, Multiverse of Matches card, just, just Wheel on the Night, boom, boom, them talking really slow. The reason I'm pointing this stuff is because with television, or the reason I'm pointing this out, I feel like I stumbled on my words. I don't know what I just said. The reason I'm pointing that out is because these are precious seconds, precious minutes on air. When you're taking two and a half minutes to run through a card, you, you've got 30, 45 seconds there that Jonah could be doing a promo backstage. Honor No More could be doing some kind of promo. You, you, can, you can do something better with that time than what they do. So I feel like there's a lot of wasted time on the show. The recaps and the, the intro, you know, the wheel on the night and Scott's got to get on there. You know, like there's definitely, I would say, in my opinion, about five minutes in the show that's, that's fluff that you can do some good stuff. Like you, you could have been doing some, remember I've been talking about Honor No More and how, I mean, they got back on ball, on the ball this episode but it started, it, that story like completely started falling off. What if you take 45 seconds that you're, that you want us to hear the song and instead, you know, here's a backstage Eddie Edwards segment. It doesn't have to be with Gina, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I don't really like interviews like that, but you know, like the stuff Jonah does, his backstage segments, they're excellent. You know, uh, Macklin's done a few like that, like more of that with other stars on the roster. You know what I mean? So uh, I watched it on YouTube afterwards. I don't think it was post-edited, but I know for me there was no We Own the Night intro. It just did the p- video package and it jumped right into the episode. So I appreciate appreciated that. Um, as far as the opening segment, oh, let's talk about the crowd here. The crowd was great. The crowd was excellent. The crowd was loud. The crowd was engaged. And what did they do this episode that another thing I'm talking about, I've been talking about, they started showing us the crowd. They started showing us the people. Because what's another thing TW and I say? Why go there and get engaged and bring signs and do all that shit if you're not going to be on screen? If it's going to be the same three or four people that show up at every episode, they did it again this show too. They do it every show. But if, it, if they're the only ones who are going to be on TV, why go there and just visually have fun? Why, why get into it if you're just going to be 
<coughs> excuse me, behind the camera. So they did a really good job during this opening segment with Morrissey of showing new angles. Um, you know, because the other thing TW and I were saying is that every set of tapings, there's fans who start circulating videos and pictures online on, on Twitter. We see like, oh man, there's a lot of people there. But then you watch the episode, it looks the same. It feels the same. It sounds the same. You wouldn't even know you're in a different venue. With this one, we knew we were in a different venue. And, and Philadelphia's got a passionate crowd. They, they always have. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big NBA fan. I know watching the 76ers play, like, their fans are crazy. So it's, it's, it's a good venue to be at. Because believe, I believe the last time they were there, I was told the fans weren't super engaged with what they were doing. Um, I think they had to do with the the promotion of the show. They were just like, you know, we're bringing Tommy Dreamer and Rhino. And they're like, okay, cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. I keep coughing. I try not to do that when I podcast. But they but they look good. They sounded good. I thought they cut to the crowd. I know this is like nitpicky shit, like BQ's never satisfied. I thought they cut to the crowd a little too much <laughs> during Morrissey's promo. It's almost like... You know, you know the way they are. They overkill things. So it's like, hey, we're going to show the crowd, but we're just going to keep showing it every like 20 seconds. Like it was a little much, but it was it was it was definitely a huge step up. Like that's what we've been wanting. That's what we've been asking for. Let's see people enjoying it and having fun. So I'm curious to hear what, you know, TW's thoughts on that when, when he's back on the show next week. But, uh, you know, from what I saw online, everyone was really happy with that as well. So the show looked good. It sounded good. And it was just better. Overall, it was easier to enjoy. It's easier to digest, you know. But this opening segment with Morrissey. Morrissey's been doing some weird, silly shit the last few weeks. My personal opinion, I could be way off on this, is that if they feature him too much, he's going to get over more than Josh Alexander, and that's not what they want. That's pure speculation, speculation on my part. So I think they had him doing... You know, they kept them on the show, but the stuff with Brian Myers was dumb. But all of a sudden, this story just, like, makes sense, you know? It's like, he, he cuts his promo, and it's excellent. It's a babyface promo. It seemed like Morrissey was trying to avoid the babyface thing for a while. He was trying, you know, he, he came in as a heel. He was trying to remain a heel. The people were getting behind him, and he tried to be like, I'm not listening to that noise. But he's, the people clearly love him, and now he's leaning into that. He's going to be a bigger star, in my opinion, than Josh Alexander in Impact. I don't think they can avoid that. I think they're trying to. I don't think they can. But he's talking about being in the best shape of his life. And just the shit he was saying about, you know, the last time I was here, you know, I, now I'm in a healthy place and this and this. The people were loving it. They were eating it up. They were buying it. It was good. It wasn't an AEW promo. for. So for those of you who don't watch All Elite Wrestling, Nobody can do an interview or a promo without being interrupted. And the funny thing is probably 50% of the time, they get interrupted before they say a word, or they only say two or three words. It's the same shit over and over. Impact started doing that for a little bit, these backstage uh, interruptions, but they've been a lot better about it. But it's good when someone actually comes out there, we just get to hear them talk, we just get to hear them speak, and get their message across. So this was really good. And I was just thinking no shit when I was at this convention that I was just talking about. I was just saying, I, I'm, I'm looking because Cardona, Chelsea, and and uh, Brian Myers were all very close together. And I'm like, why are they not together on, on Impact? You know, it's something that works. So Brian Myers comes out in this segment. And then Chelsea comes out to distract. And at first I'm confused. And then I was like, oh my God, they're, and then Cardona comes, I'm like, they're doing it. They pulled the trigger on it. And I started writing in my notes. I'm like, they need a faction name. And, and Tom just kind of is like, oh, he, he just referred to them as the major players or whatever, the major figures. It was not the major figures because that's a podcast, major players, right? He just dropped it. It wasn't, I, I wish it would have been they come out and say, hey, this is who we are. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like cut some kind of promo. That's what I, I think is good for a faction is when there's a, you know, kind of like when Honor No More is like, we're, we now, you now know us as Honor No More. And then you leave, 
knowing that's the name of the group. You know, it's, there's no no uh, gray area. But but it's whatever. I'm I'm really excited of the possibility of the three of them together. I think Brian Myers is he's funny. He's utter, a little underutilized in a in a comedy role. Like he is genuinely funny, but I th- I always thought there's a little bit more you can do with him. I like him more than most people do, I think. I've been into him. I like the Cardona stuff. I like the Chelsea stuff. So this is going to be a really interesting feud here for a while. It's going to keep Cardona and Morrissey very busy for a while. And maybe Morrissey wins the digital media championship. I don't know, but I was telling Lewis the other day, Lewis Carlin, that when Cardona drops that title, it's going to become meaningless. Like he's he, he's good for that title, but it's going to become meaningless in my opinion because no one else can do with it what he is, if that makes sense to you. You know what I mean? As far as just playing it up as the world world championship and, you know, his ties to social media and digital platforms, like only he can pull that off. So I think the championship, once he loses it, isn't going to mean a whole lot, but, you know, hopefully I'm wrong. But I'm very interested in this. I can't wait to see, like, how this goes. And Brian Myers cut down and came down, I mean, when he came down and he was cutting his promo, like, it was real. People were feeling it they were into it. like the crowd is so engaged with what these guys were saying and doing this episode there wasn't the the when they do show fans they're always like sitting on their hands like there was none of that this time this was just great and he's Myers had some zingers at him and I, I didn't write him down uh, but, but he had some zingers it was just great and then the commentary it feels good for me not to, to kick off these shows complaining about commentary I was doing that for years. Now I don't I don't have to do it anymore. It feels great. But they shut up until they needed to speak. You know, and that was something I always felt with D'Lo and Matt Stryker. I was like, these, these motherfuckers are talking too much. Like, they're not letting the entrances breathe, what's going on in there. Like, they just, something about them felt like they had to be talking nonstop throughout the show. And you kind of like when Eddie Edwards would come down and they were trying to push, oh, their people are singing to the song. Like, let us hear people singing. Like, these guys just wouldn't shut up. <clears throat> God, my throat's, throat's killing me today. I'm sorry. But they shut up, and they spoke when it was necessary. Um, after this, Deanna Peraza took on Willow Nightingale. She seemed, Willow Nightingale seems to be very popular in the internet community. I see nothing in her personally. Uh, I've only seen a handful of her matches. They were granted on AEW Dark. I saw her Ring of Honor match with Mercedes Martinez, which was not good. She almost killed her uh, doing a moonsault, uh, landing on her. She was doing a, a back, what she was, it was a moonsault, and she, she went like knees first into Mercedes' chest. Mercedes' chest. She, I mean, completely knocked the wing, wind out of her. Really could have injured her, you know. But what I wrote in my notes when Willow Nightingale came out, so you're going to tell me there was a number one contendership match for the interim women of honor or ring of honor women's champion. Number one contenders match between her and Mercedes Martinez at the super card of honor. Willow Nightingale loses this match. And then she gets a title shot two weeks later. Were, were there not stake? Were there not clear stakes with that match that the winner was going to face the the real champion. So what if she won? It, it, and this is just like the common sense of wrestling. What if Willow Nightingale won? But we were going to get these two girls again who already wrestled and, and Mercedes already beat her. Like, who would care? So with that, we know Deanna's winning. We, we already knew Deanna was winning. I'm not, not going to pretend that, you know, she, she was possibly ever in danger of losing the, the title. But those are like small details in wrestling where that was a, I don't know if any of you picked up on that as well, but those are small details where it's like, okay, she just lost a number one contenders match and then she gets the first crack of the title. Why did you have that match? So again, I don't see much in her. I'm not saying she's not talented or anything like that. I just don't see anything above. I'm talking from a standpoint of a fan. I don't wrestle. But I don't see anything above where she's at right now. I, I don't see her like progressing. Like she's not going to get to like Jordan Grace level or nothing. I, you know, and that just my personal opinion. 
but I but she's got a lot of personality which you can't teach, and it seems like she, a lot of girls, a lot of girls, a lot of fans do like her. There was the the Mickey James promo back, backstage, which again they factored in the major players into this, which was great. And this was a good Mickey James promo. Like right when Mickey was gonna start talking, I was like, I guarantee this is something we've heard before, and you know she does the. The, the 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 looking at the skies and doing their hand like it's always the same like mannerism same kind of shit with her she came off really natural and believable in this and Gia is also improving so much like she seems like a sweet girl when they first hired her if I'm just being honest I'm like she fucking sucks um but she's doing a really good job now she's improved so freaking much and she would probably be the first one to tell you. Like, if she looked back at her old stuff, she'd be like, eek. You know, I was a robot. Uh, I didn't think she was going to be able to snap out of that. And she's she's doing a really excellent job. But, but Mickey James promo about Chelsea and they're just going to continue doing this. Like, it worked. So now you're thinking, is she going to be tied in with Morrissey in any way against these other guys? Or is it going to be Morrissey? Uh, Mickey and and uh, all this, so we'll see. I don't think it's happening as a pay per view because the pay per view is already here, but there's clearly room for matches. So we'll see what happens this week. What they announce. And there was a pro- backstage promo with Tasha and Decay. Uh, Rosemary's not going to beat her for the title. She should, uh, but she's not going to. And I say she should because Rosemary needs to be champion again. But it was, a, it was a good little decay promo, but this is when I talk about wrestlers not being hot. Like, they had to heat up Rosemary really quick for this feud to give us something. They had no one else to wrestle her. But Rosemary's not hot as far as momentum. She's Rosemary. She's always going to be popular, but she has no momentum. Tasha Steeles, I don't think, has won a match since being the champion. So no one has momentum in this feud. But 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 it's whatever. It it's a throwaway feud. However you want to try to disprove that, it's it's a throwaway feud. Rocky Romero took on Jonathan Gresham. This was strictly about having a good wrestling match. There was no storyline here. This was no nothing. I thought these two were gonna team together here for a second, and then all of a sudden they have them wrestling each other. I've never seen Rocky Romero win a match. I don't watch New Japan, don't care for it, but I've seen Rocky on Impact. I've seen him on AEW. I've never seen him win. I couldn't tell you what his finisher is. I don't know what he looks like holding his hand raised. I don't have a clue. I knew he was going to lose his match. And Gresham has a way of beating guys to where he doesn't bury them in any way. You know, I thought uh, Rocky Romero was just going to take his finish and be laying on his ass. But no, you know, it was a roll-up. But he just has a way of just getting a good match out of someone, and they both leave, you know, still looking relatively strong. He suffered a possible concussion at AEW. I'm talking Jonathan Gresham in his match with Dalton Castle. And as of now, he is not cleared to compete. So I am worried about what this means for uh, for Impact and for Rebellion, the All Red Everything pay-per-view. Are they going to do so? It's going to be interesting if he doesn't wrestle. Is Tony Khan going to have an interim uh, Ring of Honor championship match? Probably not because he's only going to do that bullshit on his own brand. He's probably just going to pull him from the card. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, this was just about having a good match, and it, w- it was a good match. It was fun. It was it was very good for for what it was. Um, I noticed with uh, with Penzer. This episode, you know, because it's another one that I'm, I'm always like, hey, we need a new ring announcer. He really changed up his delivery on this episode a lot. So the beginning when he'll just be like, Jonathan Gresham, like the Gresham part sounds good. But it's the be- it's the first name that he always sounds like some closet ring announcer dude uh, that does some backyard shit. Or like me is when I was 15 trying to be a ring announcer, pretending when I was wrestling with my brother. And it seemed like that part, he was kind of. Jonathan, like he was saying it a lot quicker, but he was changing up the delivery. Absolutely. So maybe, maybe he's heard this too. And has heard me uh, talking crap about his ring announcing. So, you know, I say everything with 
not to hurt anybody's feelings, but with as a critic, I consider myself a critic, not just a podcaster or a YouTuber. I consider myself a critic as well, but I say everything with good intention. So he sounded better this episode. Um, the Josh Alexander package, there's no way the same person who puts together these packages are the one who edit the show. There's no way. No way. Because these come off professional. The background music is excellent. It's it makes sense. It sounds it sounds good and looks good. It's and it's like super professional. It is not the same person. There's no way. No way it is the same person editing the episode of Impact. I thought when they did the Josh Alexander package before his match with Christian Cage, I thought that was super boring. I thought they took up way too much television time with it. I hated it. A lot of people were like, this is some good stuff. Good shit, Vince. I didn't think so. I was bored to death. I was bored to tears. But this one was good. And, you know, he wasn't... The problem with the one before with Christian, because that feud wasn't any good, it was just a bunch of white meat baby face shit he was saying. Like this, now there's we have something, a story to get invested in when it comes to Moose spearing his wife and all that. I thought that him spearing uh, Jade was excellent. I thought it was so well done. I thought it would have been even better if half the Impact roster didn't use the spear as a finisher, but uh, that was really cool. She took that that bump better than most of the, the rest of the males who take it. But this it was just excellent, man. It was a little long again, but you know, the pay-per-view's coming up. It's the main event. So I was digging it. Um, Steve Macklin had a match with Alex Shelby. I wrote down here, he's going to be the top one of the top baby faces in the company one day. I think they are not sure how to get him there because he uh, because of his gimmick. As a as a veteran, I'm not usually a fan of veteran wrestlers. I uh, so you know, Impact once upon a time had the Veterans of War, and I, I've met uh, Crimson, uh, so I'm not I'm not downplaying anything about him. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is, when they try to make that gimmick a thing, it didn't come off genuine. You know, he, they had a match with a uh, Rohit Raju when he was Hakeem Zayn and and um, the other guy from Hell Beefcake. I forgot who his partner was on a one night only show and you know veteran veterans war veterans of war finished a match and like oh, that was the that was the hardest battle we've had since Afghanistan. Like when you say stuff like that, that's not it's not genuine. There's some there's something very genuine about the way Steve Macklin presents himself as a veteran. I think they would love to make him a baby face. I just don't think they really know how at this point. But I, I feel that he is on that trajectory tra- trajectory that EC3 was in once upon a time. I truly do. He has the entrance of a star. I think as he continues to lean out a little bit, uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with his physique. I'm just saying if he got a little leaner, I think he would look even more like a star. Um, but he's the, he's the man. I love that dude. I don't love dudes, but I like him. Um, but he had a match with Alex Shelley. I was really shocked that Alex Shelley won. Very shocked. Because there's a feud happening where he's going to wrestle his partner at the pay-per-view with Jay White. And I'm going to say this too so I don't forget. I feel that Jay White's inclusion to this match is very unnecessary. Because there's a hot feud that they're starting to get. I don't say it's hot, but it's interesting. Because they just started it with the Bullet Club and Honor No More. Like, you need Jay White for that. Why is he wrestling a, a, a nothing match with with Steve Macklin and Chris Sabin for the sake of having a three-way match on the card and getting as many people on the card as possible? The match means nothing. It's not a number one contendership for anything. It's just a three-way match. I can't remember the last time on a wrestling pay-per-view there was a multi-man match that meant nothing. So why is he why is he part of this? Why I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping it all makes sense eventually. I'm not gonna completely like shit on it. Maybe it's all gonna come together and make sense. But I was shocked that Macklin lost. It's like Macklin was this undefeated dude for the longest time, and then he just started losing. 
I don't think he's any weaker for it. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's like completely lost momentum. I talk a lot about momentum. I still think he has it, but I don't think the loss like hurts him because there's a way to lose and not, and then not hurt you, you know, but uh, I still wouldn't have him lose this much. I know that he had a Wesley Blake, I believe his name was, has his partner. I believe Impact wanted to bring them in as a tag team initially. But uh, Macklin said he needed to try doing the solo thing with all due respect to his old ex-partner. Uh, maybe they're bringing him in. I feel like they, they wanted to bring him in. Uh, but Macklin wanted to do the, the solo thing, so they probably pumped the brakes. Macklin's established himself as a solo guy. Even if he brings in a partner, a tag team partner, he's established himself for who he is. So I don't think it would make him like fall into like the... He won't fall into like Rich Swan, who's like completely fallen into the tag team division because he teamed up with Willie Mack and then we just completely forget he was world champion or a singles competitor at all. So speaking of that, the the show is a week away. Who the hell's in the tag team match? We're just supposed to assume we know. Anyway. But yeah, I, I was a little shocked with the loss. Um, what else we got here? Caleb so they show this stuff from BTI. Maybe I need to watch the BTI stuff. But but on the outside, Tennille and uh, Cassie are both trying to get him to throw the, the chair in. He throws the chair in. Madison hits um, Billy McKay with, is that her name? I, I have a hard time <laughs> thinking of their NXT names in my head too. Hits her with the belt and wins. And then they fire him. So I know he's done with the company. He was one of the entertaining parts about the show. One of the genuine funny people. Did we get a payoff with this? I mean, would you say that we got an accurate payoff with this storyline of Caleb and where he lied within, within both teams? Was all this done what seemed like it took four months to get here just to write him off TV because his contract was ending? That's kind of what I feel. And then I don't know if the inspiration can continue to feud with it. I mean, you can't keep feuding these teams. This is crazy. But they tease someone with Giselle Shaw backstage with Madison Rain. So I don't know. Is Giselle going to continue to be a team with uh, Lady Frost? I think Giselle and Chelsea Green would be excellent as a team. But I don't think – I mean, clearly that's not the direction they're going. So I, I don't know. It just seemed like a lot with no payoff whatsoever. And it's almost like we didn't even get a clear winner of the feud because the last match was a one-on-one match with a steel chair. I don't know. They haven't said what's going on with the knockout tag team titles at Rebellion. I guess we will wait and see. Honor No More had a segment. And I was feeling like, yo, what the hell happened to Honor No More? And then they come out and they just pick up where they left off. Uh, they most of them got to speak a little bit. I was like, "Whoa, Mike Bennett speaks!" I mean, that dude used to him and Maria used to take up like forty five minutes of the episode on Impact on Pop cutting promos, and all of a sudden they're like mutes. And and you know it's been circling on, on social media. Maria Canellis really wants to be involved in the new Ring of Honor. She's like clearly wants to. I mean, she said she wants to be involved, but it's clear that she would prioritize that well over impact. But they're even also even saying, hey, we're here to stay. So maybe they're not under contract. Maybe she does various things. You know, I don't think impact has a problem with that because it's less money. You got to pay someone guaranteed if they're doing different things. But you had all of honor no more out there, even PCO. So at first I'm like, okay, so they're bringing PCO back to being a heel because he was being cheered and all that stuff. I thought they completely broke him off the group personally. But Eddie cut a promo, which was good. And, you know, when he starts saying, shut up, when they start booing him, like it was, it, it came off really good. Where the hell's Alicia Edwards? What happened with that storyline? Are they just, are they afraid to put her, because they feel like she's just this over baby face that they don't want to involve her in this? And they just want her to go back to being Eddie Edwards' baby face wife when he goes back to being a baby face? Like, is that what they're doing? Or are they keeping her off because she's eventually going to screw Eddie Edwards over when he wrestles for the world championship? Or is she going to screw Josh Alexander over and turn heel in the process? 
I don't know, but I think she would be a good like little sidekick for Maria Kanellis. You guys know I was so pissed when they were going to make her the sidekick of Tennille Dashwood and they were going to be the influence. And then all of a sudden they just, oh no, we need, we need her for the storyline to be Eddie's baby face wife. Like I was so fucking furious. So we'll see what happens, but Eddie sounded really good here. He now has this, this ridiculous haircut now works for him as a heel because he, as a baby face, he just looked ridiculous. Now it, now it works. Uh, but this was really good stuff with, with uh, Honor No More. I'm, I'm feeling like they got a little bit of their momentum back. But I again, I don't understand the PCO stuff because then PCO has a match in a main event, which we'll talk about in a second. And he's right back to being cheered. At first, when Jonah came out, they were like, Jonah, Jonah. So I was like, okay, so Jonah's the baby face here. And then all of a sudden, they're cheering PCO. And I'm thinking... Are the people behind the scenes saying we're going to blur the lines between heels and baby faces in this company and just let people cheer for or boo for who they want? It's possible that's what they're trying to do here. Because if that's not what they're doing, this is horrible. I don't want I don't know if I want to call it booking or storytelling or what. I don't I don't know what to call it, but it's it's whatever it is is horrible if you can't differentiate who's good and who's bad. That's that's bad writing. So I'm going to say that they're they are trying to blur the lines with some of the wrestlers. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're just trying to let some people just be, just be wrestlers, just be anti-heroes or, or whatever, whatever it is. I have to believe what, that's what they're doing because it makes no sense otherwise. But then you have the Bullet Club come out. I hate, hate, hate cool heels. I hate cool heels. I was never a Bullet Club fan. I'm glad they're part of Impact. I was never a Bullet Club fan, though. The heels cutting, you know, promos to get the baby, I mean, not the baby faces, but the the fans involved in a very, very baby face like manner and trying to get him to do chants with you and try to be funny and then waiting for their response. Like, oh my God, I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. But again, this is like that blurring the lines. Like, who the hell are the heels here? Who are the baby faces? I don't get it. So again, I'm going to repeat what I said. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're trying to do something different and 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 have wrestlers just be wrestlers. Clearly not the whole roster, but they have to be, okay, we got PCO, we got Jonah, we got Honor No More, we got the Bullet Club. We're just going to let them be and let the fans do what they choose. It has to be what they're doing because it just it just makes no sense otherwise. I have to believe they're going to announce a match this week. I would say the Good Brothers. No, the Good Brothers on that tag team match. Okay, I'm going to say this. That tag team match is a waste of everybody's time. You're just trying to get everyone on the show. Because you don't feel honor no more. I mean, uh, Violent by Design can just hold their own as the tag team champions. People would have much, much preferred, rather than that car wreck, uh, you know, honor no more. Whether it whether it's OGK and Kenny King against uh, the Good Brothers and Chris Bay or something like that, or a, some kind of four on four or something, people would have preferred that over what they're going to do. And we don't even know. Maybe they're doing this as their way of of building the storyline for the tag team title match, but they haven't made it clear who's in the match. So if that's what they're trying to do and build that story. It's over everyone's head because we don't know who's wrestling in, in, the, in the tag team title match. So, I don't know. We'll see. And then P- PCO versus Joan. I just wrote here, who's the heel, who's the face? I thought their first match together was really good. I, I, th- I thought for a Haas match and a you know big guy's match, it was good. It was interesting because there's not a lot of big guy type of matches that are good anymore. Or that people are, are into. But these are two guys that crowd was really, really into. And then Jonah wins. I thought they were going to 50-50 book it. But, you know, Jonah wins. And he won the last one as well. So, I would imagine that one's done. You know, that that, that feud is, is done for. It's not carrying into the pay-per-view or anything like that. Because Jonah already has a match with Ishii. That I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm not going to like. But we'll see. Um, and then PCO is now going to go back into an Honor No More storyline. You would imagine the, the the Bullet Club have to bring on uh, Hikaleo back and, and El Phantasmo because you, you got to make the numbers work. 
So if that's what they're doing, some kind of like six on six or something, they, they're, you know, maybe building towards Slammiversary, that would be awesome. If I know Impact, then I do. They're going to build something really cool with them and then make it a, a monthly special match, which you want to have a good card on the monthly specials, but... And, and the shows have been so good, but as I've always said, they st- they go a little bit hard, and then the pay-per-view rolls around. It's like, oh, crap, we don't know what to do. I would rather them just build a really good story here. But we don't know what's going on with Honor no more. We don't know if these guys are like, oh, shit, Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor. We really want to go there now. <laughs> you know? We don't know. Would it even make sense to have an Honor No More stable talking about Ring of Honor went out of business and this and this, and then they go back to Ring of Honor? You know, would that make any sense? I don't know if that's what they're going to do. So I'm going to wrap it up right there, folks. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. TW should be back with me next week. and We're going to talk about, you know, hopefully some more news topics, uh, things like that. I want to get into with TW just opinions on what appears the impact has a lack of, of, uh, what do you call relationship with real influencers in the wrestling world? So I'll let you ponder on that. What do you think I mean with that? But um, that's something I want, I want to have a really good conversation with them about, and I'll get into more in detail about it. So, but thanks for uh, checking in with me this week, guys. Good episode of impact. Uh, Look forward to reviewing it again next week. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.